Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're talking about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going in this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade futures, definitely subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. And if you're not profitable yet, then I think you will be over time. You just have to stick with it. Lots of lessons, lots of courses taken, lots of pain. But over time, you make less and less mistakes. You build conviction in your profitable strategies, and then you become consistently profitable over time. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. And right here, uh, obviously obviously you can see that we sold off. And um, I closed my short for a small profit. Reason being is because I'm expecting a pullback after this sell-off. We know we sold off about 3%. So I think we can go a little lower Monday, maybe come to 15,500. Then probably retrace back up into this bar, maybe about 50% halfway through it. So, you know, don't, don't be surprised if we, if we pull back all the way to about 15,800 before going a little lower, just coming down to about 15,300 to 15,200. I made money on the short. And if you're looking for shorts, it's kind of sketchy to get short now. Um, again, if there is any dip below the Friday low on Monday, I would expect a kind of a dip to below than maybe Tuesday or Wednesday is FOMC. So Wednesday, who knows what could happen? Super choppy, super volatile. So stay safe on the Wednesday, but definitely expect us to maybe push down only a little more before we're tracing up and just, just come poking above this Friday high above the 15,700, getting into the 15,780, possibly 15,850 before coming all the way down to about just the support to the left at about 15,300 to 15,200. That's kind of my eventual target for NASDAQ. Again, I wouldn't expect us to go a lot lower than 15,200 in the next few weeks. I'm actually going to be looking for a long, say if we if we dip down and I, if I see some confirmation on the lower time frames, like the one hour, I might get in a long on Monday or so, just to below 15,500. And then once we put in a swing low, I'll probably put my stop just below that swing low on the one hour. It might be around like 15,400. And my target will be just above the high made on Friday, which was uh, 15,720. So might be like 15,740 or so as a TP. And you know, it'll be sitting around somewhere like a three to one. And again, this would be based on about the one hour and the four hour for my stop losses. And that's where I'd be looking to take the long. After the long, I'd be looking to get in a short at around that 15,750 to 15,800 area. Stops would be above the highs we made. And then the TP would be below the swing low we made. Let's say that swing low was about 15,450 that's where my stop would be and that's where my TP would be just below the swing low again. I hope that makes sense, but that's basically my full breakdown for this week. I expect us to basically come down Monday on NASDAQ, bounce up at some point in the week, get into a FIB retracement, get into the 15,800, and then, you know, around at end of week into next week being you know, end of July or beginning of August, trading back down into the 15,300, you know, early August, maybe getting down to 15,200, and then likely that being a bottom around uh, beginning of August and cycling back up. Let's head over to ES now. ES is quite more bullish because the banks have been holding up better. So tech stocks are having a little correction, bank stocks are holding up. Because of that, the bank stocks are holding up the S&P 500 and ES. So I only expect this to pull back to about the, su the supports here to the left. The highs made mid-June and end of June, which is about 4,500. So again, Monday, we could push down a little, get down to about 4550 or so, bounce back up, probably chop around, just trade about 4585 and then kind of head back down. And eventually end of August, just getting down to about 4500 right here, as you can see, resistance turned into support, probably just get down to there, 4,500 first week of August, and then trend back up. That's basically what I'm looking at for ES. This bounce that comes on ES is actually possible for us to break the high one more time and go above 46.10. So instead of making a lower high, we can make a higher high in ES while NASDAQ makes a lower high, and then come back down just get to, down to about 4,500. Very small pullback on ES I'm expecting because again, it's a lot stronger. So just about a two and a half percent correction maybe where NASDAQ is more likely to be something like a 4%. Yeah, about a 4% correction, maybe 5% and then head back up. So I'm not looking to short ES. Um, 
just focusing on my shorts on NASDAQ because it's going to be weaker in my opinion. Uh, VIX continues to have some strength here. As you can see, VIX is curling up as we've been making higher highs on ES and NASDAQ, and that's a bear sign. If the VIX continues to trend higher, making higher lows while the market makes higher highs, then it's kind of like a, a ticking time bomb where there's eventually going to be a, a big move down in most cases. DXY, we've been watching this, we've been paying attention. I made a video saying I had alert at 99.6. We hit it ever since we hit 99.6. We had been strength in the dollar. Whenever we have strength in the dollar, market tends to go down. So this is really good for us being in shorts. If this continues to push up, then obviously we'll continue to most likely have weakness for the NASDAQ and S&P 500, but even more so NASDAQ. If we do claim this 103.6, I don't, I personally don't think we'll get up here, but if we do break this swing high at 103.6, then the correction on NASDAQ can be bigger than I'm expecting. It will be bigger than I'm expecting if this dollar pushes up above 103.6. If it doesn't, if it makes a lower high, say it comes to 102.5 or 103 and heads back down, then that could likely be the end of the correction for NASDAQ and then it would be a good long opportunity on NASDAQ. Put to call ratio has bottomed and it's starting to head up. And again, that's typically a sign that we most likely topped in the market. And then this tends to keep trending up until it gets to 1.0 or so. And that usually marks a bottom for the, the market. And so for now, since this is trending up, we can expect more downside to come on NASDAQ and S&P 500. Intraday, I'm actually still gonna be looking for longs on ES especially. NASDAQ, I'll probably be still looking for shorts intraday, but my swing for, for swing positioning, again, I'm looking for an under, undercut of a low early week, and then looking for a long opportunity just to come up to a FIB retracement, get to the 50%, maybe the 618, say we undercut down here. The 618 would be at 15,820, the 50% 15 being at 15,750. So basically if I get in a long, that's my target, is about between 15,750 to 15,820. After that, get in a short, stopping above 1660, targeting another sweep of a low, probably around 15,400 or so at the end of July or beginning of August. That's this market breakdown. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos just like this. Look up for my next video coming out Wednesday night or Thursday morning. Thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate all your support and I'll see you in the next video.